My name is Peter Grüter. I represent Fastnet. I'm the second German representing a Southern European uh, company. Uh, I don't know uh, what the reason is, but I suspect that may be also to do with the region and other event teams. Um, I represent the company, which is the leading alternative wireline operator in Italy. Um, we started in the early 2000s with cabling fiber to the home in Italy, and nowadays are deploying fiber to the street. Um, I will focus a bit on another slice of the digital value chain, uh, need, namely access, because um, what I would like to point out is that the digital value chain contains two distinct different slices. First of all, access, and second, um, services. While all the distinguished speakers up to now have focused on uh, a little bit on uh, services, I would like to draw also the attention to access. Because if the roads on which the services run are not well managed and not open for the services who are coming, then we will face much more difficulties in ensuring a competitive Europe than today. So what are the main differences between services and access? Access is mostly a local game. Um, if you look at if continental scale matters in access, is mostly no. Um, while what is important in services is global scale and access, it really matters that you can roll out networks throughout the country in an efficient way, and local scale is usually important. Um, now, if, if you actually look at what is important, it's not size. So the big companies, if you look at the big companies, what did they do for access? It's, well, a little bit limited if there were no competition. So the question today should be, how can you ensure comp competition also in the access to remain what it was in the future to actually prove that um, the better will win and um, the bad bit will come. Now, um, FASET is actually providing an excellent example of how a changer can leverage on access regulation and as in the past. We were not a free rider, as you may suggest, but we were actually the first ones to invest heavily in access networks in fiber, as I said. A similar example as free in uh, France, and we would like actually to draw the attention to the point that it's important to maintain this regulatory regime. Um, we believe that competition and openness for competition is really the key driver to drive investments and ensure competitiveness. And we would like to see that this will also continue in the future so there is some uh, incentives for people to develop new services and consume new services, become familiar with new services and be able to operate these services. Um, if it now turn to content and services, yes, there that it's a continental game, um, it's size matters, and Europe has a huge disadvantage if I compare it to the US. Um, there is no digital single market. I think that is also what the new speakers have said before. Um, we, if you look, for example, at what does it take to build uh, European Netflix, you may actually want to see that you have to tackle 28 different markets. Um, if someone is now saying, okay, what does it need? I need to secure broadcasting rights for all different chains in all the countries. Um, if, for example, we want to import into Italy the Swiss channels, we need to negotiate in Switzerland. If you want to um, import into Switzerland the Italian channels, we need to negotiate in Switzerland. So it's a real nightmare to develop cross-border uh, services. Um, then we need to actually negotiate with the, um, in each country with the collecting societies uh, in uh, Italy, in Switzerland, in all the 28 different countries. So there's a lot of obstacles to actually ensure that we can deliver very good services across Europe. Um, for us, it's important that these barriers will be abolished so we can actually provide very good services and competitive service across our networks to our customers and make them happy and ensure the competitiveness of the Italian economy. Um, so for us, there are actually two different, if I want to say, regulatory frameworks for an access that should ensure there's still access at competitive price to the existing bottlenecks because there are bottlenecks um, which is still linked to the legacy infrastructure. And while on the digital single market, we believe that we must really abolish all the obstacles to delivering services across the continent, it will be vital to the development of the EU that these barriers will actually be removed. Maybe a last comment on the Juncker plan. Um, uh, currently in discussion, I guess, uh, is a bit on how to, how to uh, define the boundaries. 
it's okay, it's very good if you get easy access to financial resources through soft loans and other instruments, um, for example, to develop new fiber networks. But however, for us and all other investors, it's important that there is certainty on the rules, so that the rules will not be changed throughout the game. We understand that one of the suggestions actually to, to provide state aid also in areas where competition is playing, so where, for example, two players have invested, that state aid will be provided to secure a third network, um, where we would see that this will certainly create barriers for further investments by any of the two players. Um, for us, it is important that this will actually be still or exist in the same framework as today. Stated yes, but certainly also only in the areas where there is no competition. There is no competitive network built out by any of the players in the market. So competition is actually the main driver of uh, success in Europe for us. Now, let me summarize for us what does it mean openness and neutrality along the value chain. For us, access regulation is essential to remove existing bottlenecks for all players to ensure there is an even playing field to develop high-performing bandwidth networks. On the digital single market, the rules must be changed so we can actually develop uh, services across borders much more easily. And then we need a predictable and productive state aid uh, framework so that the investors actually get returns they are hoping for when they invested two, three years ago. I think if we ensure these three pillars of our, uh, let's say, regulatory strategy, we will be sure that we have a more competitive Europe in the future than today. Thank you.